How long do you sit in your car after work? Welcome to the Romanticize Your 30s podcast. This is for the girls who thought their 30s would be differently. Last week, we talked all about our 20s and what we thought our 30s would be. This week, I want to dive into a topic that I hope hit home for a lot of us. I remember in my late 20s, um, after like every day after work, I would literally commute home. I had the longest commute and I would still sit in my car for like up to 30 minutes and I would just like play my favorite songs on repeat or I would be on the phone with one of my girlfriends. Me and my girlfriends are from an era where we talk on the phone a lot more than we text and so some of my friends would like if I had an hour commute we would be on the phone for an hour plus those 30 minutes I sat in the car and it's that constant like trying to get off the phone at some point you know but nonetheless um I remember just talking to my girlfriends over and over and we would talk about all of our plans and all the things we wanted to do and all the places we wanted to go, things we wanted to see, trips we wanted to take, how we wanted to reconnect again because at this point I had moved across country from everybody that I've known um, and I, so all of my friends was kind of around the country and so it's more of a we haven't seen each other in a long time like let's plan a trip kind of conversations or just like oh this is what I'm working on kind of things. I just remember a lot of times though when I wasn't on the phone with my girlfriend just sitting in my car for however long listening to my favorite songs and I'm a very lyrical kind of song listener to the sense that I don't really care for the beat I really listen and hone into the lyrics which is why some of my favorite artists is gonna be Rod Wave, Lil Baby, Da Baby, um, I kind of like J. Cole um, just to name a few. And it's really because a lot of the things that they talk about in their lyrics kind of hit home for me or like related to my life personally. And I just remember sitting in my car all those days and just thinking of what would life be like if I did X, you know? Um, and so it just became a habit of just like a constant daydream, really of just like wanting something more for myself, wanting better, wanting to get out of corporate America, not wanting a nine to five. What if, what if, what if? And finally, my what if turned into this is my reality. So I felt like my glory days was around, hmm, right after high school until about 25, 26. There's so many pivotal moments that happens in that time frame. One, most people are moving out on their own for the first time, getting your own apartment for the first time, probably having a real relationship, um, fostering real friendships, um, and then also moving and um, moving out of spaces mentally, physically and emotionally. I think one of the big pivots in that time frame, for me at least, was um, I had moved from multiple cities. So between going to high school, leaving high school and um, the time I turned 26 is when I was in Texas, I had moved from the Midwest to, so like Iowa to um, Florida then over to Texas. So for me, I had moved so much that I had lost that sense of attachment to places um, and I was willing to go at the drop of a hat. And so, and I also had lost like connection to people in a sense that like, I feel like a lot of people would describe me as someone who's never met a stranger. Um, but I had lost a sense of deep connection to people since I left Iowa. I hadn't met a lot of like, um, I hadn't met a lot of like friends if you, I didn't make a lot of deep connections. They were very surface level connections. And so um, I feel like I started to lose that sense of connection to people. And then that emotional attachment is the relationships you once had, they start to wither away or they start to turn into something differently. It's like long distance relationships with friends. Yeah, and that was hard. So you go from high school where you see the same people every single day um, to college where you're like finally out on your own, 
living this life that you want to live, that you create to make your own. You are fostering this community. Um, you're fostering the people that you want to be around, friends, family, etc. To just like really stepping out on your own. After college, people kind of go their own ways, whether that's different cities. Um, but for me, it's like it was different states. And so, and I just remember no matter what city I lived in, what state I lived in, um, I always sat in my car and I just would think the unimaginable. Because prior to 2019, I was that girl who thought that she would be in corporate America or ever. Um, one of my friends, she like, she reminds me of this sometimes about how like, oh, remember when you said that you would never own a business and you would never leave corporate America and you were gonna retire there. And it's just so funny looking back at that throughout every phase of my life, after college, moving across country, I always sat in my car after work. And those moments to me was just like a moment to myself. It was a moment to think about the things that like I wanted. It wasn't, oh, I have to um, do this or I have to do that or I have to be at work at this time or I need to go change to go to this event. It was really just like, this is where we've come from. This is what we want to do next. It was all about me. And I think that some people mistake selfishness for arrogance but the reality is we all all of us need to be selfish in a sense to get to the next place we want to be a lot of times people cannot see the vision that you have and so they don't believe in it or they don't push you towards it and so a lot of times my best ideas come in silence <laughs> i feel like this episode is very similar to um my car sessions and where I don't really have pen and paper. I just have me and my thoughts and it's very much just like getting my thoughts out and kind of unraveling all those plans that I think that I want to make for my future. You know, in episode one, we talked deeply about um, how we thought our 30s would just be like raising kids and family, you know? So sitting, going back to sitting in the car, I was planning, oh, like, um, who was I gonna be with, you know, from the people that I was dating at the time. It's like, oh, how would our family be? How would our life be if this happened, when this happens? And um, it's just very interesting to look back on those conversations, those cars, we'll call them car stations, to look back on those car stations now and to realize that I've always been in my own corner. I've always had a plan for me and it's really fostered the person that I am today. And so I really challenge and encourage you to make a plan for you. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was a couch cursation. <laughs> um, but in this episode, I really wanted to talk about, I really wanted to bring you back to that place of sitting in that car. And if you're in that car right now, take that moment. Don't take it for granted. Because all those things that you're saying, um, you're thinking and you're saying to your friends, you're saying out loud, you're working through in your head, that's that's the version of you that you want to be. And don't, don't ignore it. So... <laughs> I challenge you to go after the reason you set in the car that extra soul. I want you to remember that today is yesterday's tomorrow, so don't wait another day. Thanks so much for tuning in, Romantics. Until next time.